In this section, I am going to discuss quadratic inequalities. Quadratic inequalities are equations of second degree that uses an inequality sign instead of an equal sign. Here are some examples of quadratic inequalities. You are already familiar with quadratic equations. It's just that this time around, we're going to discuss inequalities. Here are the steps to solve quadratic inequalities. The first step is to set one side of the inequality to zero. For example, in this case over here, we will set one side to zero. x squared minus x minus 12 is greater than or equal to zero. The second step is to find the zeros of the non-zero side. Take note that the non-zero side in this case is factorable. It can be factored as x minus 4, x plus 3, greater than or equal to 0. Next, we will make a table of values. I will write the factors here, and for each factor, I'm going to make a number line. What we do is, we will get the numbers for which this one will be equal to 0. Remember, in our second step, we had to find the zeros of the left-hand side. This is going to be 0 when x is equal to 4, and this is 0 when x is negative 3. Of course, negative 3 is to the left of 4. We now divide our number line at this point. So it will be divided at negative 3 and 4. I will make those points there to indicate that x plus 3 is going to be 0 at negative 3 and x minus 4 is going to be 0 at x equals 4. Let us now consider x minus 4. For this side, we have x greater than 4. This middle interval means that x is between negative 3 and 4. And this one here says that x is less than negative 3. What can you say about the value of x minus 4 when you are here, when x is greater than 4? So for example, let's have a test value. When x is equal to 5, what is 5 minus 4? That's equal to 1. So it's positive. What about if you are on this interval? You are between negative 3 and 4. Let's put a test value. Let's say 0. If x is equal to 0, 0 minus 4 is negative 4. So that's negative. And lastly, if x is less than negative 3, what is the value of x minus 4? Let's say that x is negative 4 for our test value. Negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8. So hence, it's going to be negative. Notice that you don't really have to get test values. So what would be a shortcut for this one? You can think of it as if it's your origin. Recall that for your number line, this is your 0. Everything to the right of 0 is going to be positive and everything to the left of 0 is negative. These values here will sort of like be your origin. Everything to the right is going to be positive and everything to the left will be negative. So hence, for x plus 3, everything to the right is positive and everything to the left is negative. Now we are ready to get the product of x minus 4 and x plus 3. I have this number line for the product x minus 4 times x plus 3 and then I will just extend these lines here. If we are here on this interval, x is less than negative 3, x minus 4 is negative, and x plus 3 is negative. Therefore, what can we say about the product x minus 4 times x plus 3? Negative times negative is positive. Here, x minus 4 is negative times x plus 3, which is positive. So this will be negative. And lastly, positive times positive. So that's positive. But when we go back to our original inequality, what is it that we want? We want the product x minus 4, x plus 3 to be greater than or equal to 0. Hence, we want it to be positive. What will be those intervals? We have x less than negative 3, but take note that it can be equal to 0. We can now have equal to negative 3 here. 
because when x is negative 3, this product is 0. For this one, x greater than 4, this is positive, so we are going to take that. We will also take equal to 4 because when x is equal to 4, we are allowed to have the product equal to 0. That will be the solution of this quadratic inequality. In interval notation, we can write this as negative infinity to negative 3. x greater than or equal to 4 is 4 to infinity or means union. Here is a tip for you. I always want the coefficient of x squared to be positive. So I will multiply both sides by negative 1. So it will be x squared minus 4x minus 5. But since I multiplied both sides by negative 1, this inequality sign will flip. Next, we will factor it. So it's x minus 5, x plus 1, less than 0. We are now going to create our table of signs. Here are my number lines for x minus 5, x plus 1, and their product x minus 5 is 0 at x equals 5. x plus 1 is 0 at negative 1. And I will now divide my number lines at this point. So here, everything to the right of 5, x minus 5 is going to be positive. Everything to the left is going to be negative. Here, everything to the right of negative 1 is positive. Everything to the left is negative. Therefore, for the product, negative times negative is positive, negative times positive is negative, and positive times positive is positive. What do we want? We want the product x minus 5, x plus 1 to be less than 0. Remember, you have to look at this one and not this one. Alright, because the factors that you wrote here came from here. So you will take the negative sign. And what is this interval? This is the interval x is between negative 1 to 5. Take note that I did not include negative 1 and 5 because our inequality here is strictly less than 0. If x is negative 1, this product will be equal to 0, right? So that's why I did not include it. Similarly, if x is equal to 5, this product will be equal to 0. In interval notation, this is negative 1, 5. This is our solution set. For our next example, we have negative 3 times x plus 3 squared less than or equal to 2. As I have mentioned earlier, I want the coefficient of x squared to be always positive. Hence, I will divide both sides by negative 3. Note that since I divided both sides by a negative number, the inequality sign will now flip. However, the square of a number, if you have something squared, the square of that number is always greater than or equal to zero. So therefore, this one is always true. Equivalently, it means that your solution set is the set of real numbers. If something is always true, that means that you can plug in any value for x. Hence, the solution set is the set of all real numbers. Another example, this is a bit similar to the previous one. I will just divide both sides by 4. So I have x minus 3 squared greater than or equal to negative 1 half. Again, the solution set for this one is the set of all real numbers because the square of a number is always greater than or equal to 0. Suppose, class, just in case that what we had was x minus 3 squared less than or equal to negative 1 half. What would be the solution set for this one? This one cannot happen, correct? Because the square of a number is always greater than or equal to 0. This is impossible. Hence, the solution set here is the empty set. For our last example, we have this one. Remember that the first step is to set one side to zero. So I will put everything on the left-hand side. This is less than zero. 
what is our next step? We want to find the zeros of your left-hand side. Before we can do that, we have to expand this. So we have 2x squared. x minus 2x is negative x minus 1. Minus this product here is 3x squared plus 9x plus x. So that's 10x. Do not forget your parenthesis here because you are going to subtract this whole thing from here. Let us now get rid of the parenthesis by distributing the minus sign. So we have minus 3x squared minus 10x minus 3. Hence, we get negative x squared minus 11x minus 4 less than 0. Again, I do not want the coefficient to be negative, so I will multiply both sides by negative 1. Do not forget to flip the inequality sign because you multiplied both sides by a negative number. Now, take note that this is no longer factorable. Since we want to get the zeros, we will now make use of the quadratic formula. I will set that to zero for a while to find the zero. So x, our quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So it's negative 11 plus or minus 11 squared minus 4 times 1 times 4 all over 2 times 1. So that's negative 11 plus or minus 11 squared is 121 minus 16 all over 2. So that's negative 11 plus or minus square root of 105 all over 2. I just wrote down the inequality that we are solving here. How will we now create our table of signs or table of values now that this is not factorable? We can still do so except that we will just look at the zeros. What are our zeros here? The first one is negative 11 minus square root of 105 all over 2. And the other one is negative 11 plus square root of 105 over 2. I will use points to indicate that. I will draw another number line for our product. This number line is for our product x squared plus 11x plus 4. I will divide our two number lines at these points. Everything to the right of this zero is positive. Everything to the left is negative. Everything to the right is positive. Everything to the left is negative. So therefore, negative times negative is positive. Positive times negative is negative. Positive times positive is positive. But what is it that we want? We want x squared plus 11x plus 4 to be greater than 0. So we want these intervals positive. What are these? This is to the left of this 0. So that's x less than negative 11 minus square root of 105 all over 2 or this one everything to the right of this 0 x is greater than negative 11 plus square root of 105 all over 2 